Hello everybody. Hi Natalia. Oh hi Josephine. And Sarah. Oh and hi Heidi. Heidi knows that I've got my hair and my makeup done. Not that you'll see it, but she knows. She's seen a picture already. Hi Caroline, lovely to see you here as well. I'll just wait another few seconds, just see if anybody else turns up. If not, we'll start. <laughs> oh, I've paid Heidi. The money's in the post. <laughs> Hi, Tamara. Oh, wow, Sarah. You're on a roll with those boxes, aren't you? They're easy, though, aren't they? They're not that difficult once you get the hang of it. Hi, Tamara. Hope you're all right. Everybody had a good day. Not been a bad day weather-wise. It's been sunny here. £50. Oh. oh, I bet they did, Sarah. They make a lovely gift. And I mean, if you don't want to put um, the butterfly in, you could make another little box on the inside and put a few chocolates in or something. Right then, I'll get started and then we don't have to wait any longer. Um, so... Just move that out of the way. So today we're going to be making this card here. Um, I don't really know what what it's called, what the title of the card is. Um, I don't know what it's. It's an easel card, obviously. Um, corner fold back easel, something like that. Um, if anybody knows the idea. Um, oh hi Sarah, how are you? Nice to see you here. Um, yeah so I don't really know what, what it's called and I like it like that and to be honest I also like it like that with the corners glued back um, and also the beauty of this card is that it actually does fold flat so that you can put it in an envelope I'm not sure I'm folding it the correct I did it earlier. No, no, wait a minute. <laughs> it's like the generation game. Fold flat to go into an envelope. So it, it will post. I mean, it is it is a little bit bulky, uh, but obviously that's up to you. I mean, if you don't put 3D flowers on, it won't be quite as bulky um, and, you know, bows and things. Um, but it will, it will fold flat. Um, so, right, so... Um, don't, if you don't have a pen and pa uh, paper, um, so first of all, um, well, it keeps stopping, doesn't it? So sorry, it keeps keeps stopping. Um, what the 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 card would go as standard in the post or, or maybe a large letter i don't know we've got to go through that slot and it um anyway i'll carry on um you might just have to bear with it keep uh, keep stopping um so i started off with an a4 piece of white card um and i basically cut the card 21 centimeters by 21 centimetres. I've tried to go um, metric this week. Um, and then what, what you need to do is basically score the card um, ver uh, vertically and horizontally and you score at 10.5 centimetres by 
ten and a half centimeters which is the central point and then once you've done that you want to score the top two because you'll see this foot the four squares so score the top two squares diagonally from corner to corner that making sense yeah it's buffering it's out it's it's the internet it's been horrendous um sorry um so then you want to fold fold along the middle the crisscross to, for the four squares and you also want to fold the far corners i have done it uh, previously but i'm just just doing it again to show you um so i'll just put put that to side and then you want to make your mats and layers so you want to cut out now I'm only cutting out three of each because those are the only bits that, that you see if I bring the card back in when the card folds over um, you don't see this square here so I really don't see the point in decorating that and also it makes it that little bit flatter uh, for posting so I'm um, it, but it's up to you if you want to decorate that square obviously just add on another another set of matte and layers um so i've cut some black card and i've cut three squares and they're all uh 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter and then i've cut three white squares and these are nine and a half centimeter by nine and a half centimeter now you know me and I like to do a little bit of prep so as if by magic I have actually decorated a couple of these squares. So as you can see I've decided to use for my demo today I thought we'd go back to one of the older um, products, uh, well say old, they only came out in January um, but one of the first products that I received from Lisa and I loved them from the minute that I got them I just love these flowers and I love the fact that they're um, polka dot oh sorry about that Josephine oh. um, can everybody else hear I'm really sorry Can everybody else hear what I'm saying? Hmm. Anyway, I'll carry on. Um, so, so I've used the Daisy Burst um, stamp set, and with the Daisy Burst, you get this lovely border, and then you get the individual. Um, uh, flowers as well and there is also a matching die set as well so that you can cut the flowers you can cut the border out and you can also cut the flowers out um, so um, for uh, the, the one that I made sorry it's uh, <laughs> It's put me off a bit because it keeps stopping and people say they can't hear. Um, for the one that I made earlier, um, I used purple, green and pink. But you know me, I don't make the same card twice. So uh, for this card, I'm using pink, yellow and purple. And I've used a different flower to what I used last time. So it's basically up to you. And I mean, you can use any stamps. I'm just using these for the purpose of the demo. So I've done those two. And so I thought I would do, I'll just do one to show you what I do um so I'll bring my pink pink ink in and just stamp and this is just um random there is no um right way no wrong way you just do what you want and I don't it doesn't matter to me sometimes it depends which inks you use um sometimes the flowers don't stamp out bold fully but i don't actually mind that i like the sort of more shabby um <laughs> sh that's a good excuse isn't it but i, I quite like the um you know like that one i mean I sh if i'd have used a stamping platform 
I could have gone back over um, but it, it doesn't really bother me that um, so that's my um, that's my pink just get a, a wipe and wipe my block And then I went in with um, a smaller little solid flower in the purple. And remember to sort of go over the edge. I mean, it, it, you, it's up to you. You could stamp a piece of card before you actually... Um, cut it into the squares or you can do each um, each set of squares separately that, that's completely up to you now I'm, I'm just going to show you this is how I use the tiny the tiny little dot dot stamp I don't know if you can see it and rather than put it on a block because I, f I find if you put it on a block you you've got the um, potential to pick ink up on the block and um, for it to transfer on, onto your um, card. One way of, of stopping that is by um, putting another stamp on the same block and not inking that other stamp just so that you've got you're not going it's not going to wobble as much. Um, but my top tip is put the stamp on the end of your finger. It sticks to my finger for the little tiny ones and then just dab it on your ink and then just and that works for me every time and I don't get that risk of um, of the um, the ink transferring onto my block um, and that's, that's just how quick and easy that was that is so I'll just put those back there so if I bring back bring back the card so you can see that um, the four sections and what you need to do the top bit that's got the diagonal curve leave that as it is but the bottom section you need I mean you could do it with a guillotine or a trimmer I'm just doing it with a scissor so you can see what I'm doing quite easily you're just going to cut up to that center so that those two sections are not connected anymore and then you can see that is the basis of of the card then so basically now i'm just going to stick on my mats and layers so as you can as i said before i'm going to leave that one blank and for speed i'm, I'm using uh, wet glue you can use tape you can use whatever you want um so I'm going to just, um, only like a top tip, I mean, whether it's right or wrong, I don't know, but that's what I do and it works for me. Um, and I'm safe for doing it that way. I don't tend to get ink everywhere. So that's your base. That's the, the going to be the base of the card. Can you see when you, do, when you do that? So these other two squares, you need to chop them in half. Let's get my guillotine. to make your triangles to decorate so I'm just going to chop those in half lining up the points and the same it's sharpening I think that this one same with your patterns that you've just created try keep them together so that when you um, attach them to the card so they're all the same size but can you see when you when you um when you attach them to the card the pattern actually then will marry up going to stick those on there so that 
that's one side. I mean, you'll, you'll take a little bit more care than me. I'm just doing a little bit of speed crafting here just to try and get it done in a shorter space of time. Um, then, so bring your card blank in. And we're just going to put them onto, onto the diagonal. Sorry, that's a bit rough. I need to sharpen my... Uh, my guillotine, it's as old as the hills, is that one? Um, take a bit more care, line up your, your layers. Stick them on like that. Oh no, it's not complicated at all, it's so easy. I think they're all easy once you know how to do it. I mean, um, and and it's not that difficult. There isn't a lot of fiddly measurements either. It's basically squares and diagonals. So there you go, and that is your finished, um, your finished base. And like I say, you can either leave it like that, or I think it also looks effective. You could actually glue those those triangles down. And make it into a, a triangular card um, so that's that's the base so now I'm going to move swiftly on um, to the um, to the easel part so I'll show you the the card again so this central part here is just a little circular easel um, and so to do that I'm sure most of you know you need to get um, a circular die here's another one I've had since uh, the year dot I've had it forever um, so you, you get your, you get your piece of card and you fold your card um, I'll get a piece of scrap get a piece of card and fold it in half and then when you run it through your die cutting machine just make sure that that little part of the die there is overhanging the fold that means then that you'll be left with with the hinge so you need to cut that onto a double a folded piece of card and then you need to cut another circle um, uh, sorry uh, hi Dawn no problem see you later uh, another circle of card um, and well that that makes you what you have to do then is fold fold this one of these and I have actually decorated this uh, before um, just to make it a bit quicker so this top piece here I mean you should use a scoreboard um, but you're basically not gonna fold that that top bit like that and then you're gonna stick this onto there like that and that makes your easel most people know do know how to make an easel but if you don't and if if anybody that's new and i'm going a bit too quick um you can always get in touch um and and, and i'll go through it again with you i'll make a little video for you again um so what what then i did is i stamped onto um onto this plain easel so i used my little stamps on my finger again I went round uh, just to make a little random pattern just to make it a little bit more interesting um, but then I'm using the um, Just Saying collection the sentiments and I really do love these sentiments and whenever I make a card and whenever I post it online everybody comments how nice the sentiments are um, you've got things like may your day be filled with happiness be the reason someone smiles today live every day as if it's your last some days you just have to create your own sunshine um, so on my last card I used the um, be the reason someone smiles today um, so shall we do a different one today we'll do um, some days see if that, see if that fits on 
yeah it just fit on there so when when you're placing the sentiment on as well because i'm going to be adding flowers to this there i'm not going to stamp my sentiment in the middle i'm going to just move it over a little bit um so that there is room down the bottom end here for um for my flowers um so um and when i'm stamping a sentiment i also i always like to use my versafine because uh, i think it gives a crisper a crisper look so i'm just going to ink up my sentiment make sure i've got it the right way right way up and i'm gonna just stamp it just over there for, like that just leave it a few minutes and look they stamp they stamp absolutely beautifully uh, not a problem they're not blurred or anything they're really crisp um so I'll just move that over there and sometimes when i've used versafan it doesn't always um dry immediately so just going to put that over just to blot it so that i'm not getting black ink everywhere um no it's not going to be too bad um so basically then that 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 goes on there the one that i've done here um i just went around the edge as well with a little bit with a a black um, fine liner pen just a bit of doodling little stitches um, that's completely up to you whichever way you like it some people just like it you know sort of clean uh, crisp and clean so I'm just going to add some glue be careful here remember you don't want you better to put the glue onto this part rather than the circle because you don't want glue on this top top part um, so just stick that on there like that and there you've got your little easel um then prior to my live i actually stamped out the flowers the the polka dot flowers uh yet again from the daisy burst edge stamps i stamped a, a large one and three of the more medium and then i used the um the dies just to cut the flowers out once again, um, you know, if you're new to crafting and you need a little bit of help, just get in touch. But I didn't really, um, thought there's no point doing that on this live because most people know how to do it. Um, so I'm just going to put a little dab of glue onto the back of, of my flowers. You can add foliage, um, um, that we, with the four point flowers you get some lovely little swirls you can add them you could actually cut the um, the edge die and you can actually snip out some of the swirls from that it's up to you I've just kept it simple just just for the demo um, you know this isn't uh, written in stone this is for you to take and to create your own uh, put your own mark on it don't want to hide that word there um so that's there's the flowers and of course uh, no flower is uh, complete without a gem or a pearl and i'm using um the pearls these were on these weren't the first pearls and they weren't the last pearls they were the pearls in the middle and i don't know does anybody know can anybody help me with the name of these pearls um but um they're all beautiful whichever set whichever set you've got um they've got a lovely pearlescent finish to them uh, which and it really does just put the finishing touch on any project really i try and add them onto I'll, I'll add them onto every project going um so i'm just going to add those in the center the beauty of the stamp the flower stamps um the day's burst flower stamps and the dies is that when you cut out the flower um i don't know whether you can see um mm -hmm. it, it doesn't leave a white edge around the edge of the flower it cuts right to the to the colorful edge of the um flower so i'm just going to stick this now onto my card so bring your card in and uh you decide 
where you want that to be just put a little bit of glue on the bottom and that, it, wet glue is perfect because you can just see exactly where and give, it's got a little bit of wiggle room so you can put it exactly where you want it and then to finish it off I'm aware it's not quite the same pink but I um, I made a little bow and I'm just going to use that as the stopper you can you can do another um, die cut flower um, or you could put a strip of something and just, just you just need something just to raise it up just to stop that um, and there you have it I mean it's up to you you could add pearls to some of these flowers um, it just depends like I say if you're posting it then you want to keep it to a minimum the embellishments but if you're giving it by hand then you can put whatever you want on I think this would look lovely with some of the splat stamps the script stamps the postcard stamps so this style lends it obviously the world's your oyster if you don't want to use stamps you could use the barley papers the capri papers um, you you tailor this to to however you want um so that is my card for today um like i say any problems any questions um just leave a comment um <clears throat> and i'll i'll get back to you um if you want to um i forgot what i'm gonna say then sorry um i'd love to see if you make some like sarah made the boxes it'd be lovely to see um what she'd done um you know it's great to see that you're inspiring somebody so before i go um just to say that the all these products they're all available on lisa's website which is that craftplace.co.uk um, um obviously some of the newer products are still exclusive to create and craft but these are definitely these items here are definitely on the website at the moment um and just a reminder we also have a challenge going on on our um facebook page um and this month's challenge is butterflies so any project you make with butterflies just add it to the album on the facebook page on the crafting with lisa hart and facebook page and there is a fab prize as far as i remember it's uh, three stencils and there is a box with a surprise inside i'm not sure i don't even know what's in there um and we also have a blog um which um, every day or every other day, uh, there's not many days when there isn't anything on there, but there are lots of in lots of inspirational projects posted by the DT on the blog, and more more often than not, there is step by step instruction. So that's yet another resource for you to be able to use. Um, so I'm going to say goodbye now because I'm not sure whether it's still working or not, and um, I'll catch you all later. Thank you.